Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, who is the most merciful and most beneficent. I am Saleha from Department of ES Biotechnology. Today I am here to represent the topic of angiotensin converting enzyme AC inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers ARBs. Introduction to AC inhibitors. AC inhibitors are a class of medications commonly used to treat high blood pressure, heart failure, and other cardiovascular conditions. They work by blocking the action of angiotensin converting enzyme that is responsible for converting angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, a potent vasoconstrictor. By inhibiting this enzyme, AC inhibitors reduce the production of angiotensin 2 and dilate blood vessels, which reduce to a decrease in blood pressure and an improvement in blood flow to the heart and other organs. In addition to their blood pressure lowering effects, ACE inhibitors can also help to protect the kidneys in patients with diabetes and kidney diseases. Some common examples of AC inhibitors include lisinopril, anapril, ramipril, and captopril. Introduction to ARBs ARBs are a class of medications that are used to treat high blood pressure, heart failure, and other cardiovascular conditions. They work by blocking the action of angiotensin 2, that is a hormone, and causes blood vessels to constrict and raises blood pressure. ARBs bind to angiotensin 2 receptors in the body, preventing the hormone from exerting its effects. This causes blood vessels to relax and widen, which leads to a decrease in blood pressure and an improvement in blood flow to the heart and other organs. Then, renin angiotensin in aldosterone system. The renin angiotensin aldosterone system is a complex hormonal system that helps to regulate blood pressure and fluid balance in the body. It involves several different hormones and enzymes that work together to maintain homeostasis. Then, how it regulates blood pressure? The renin angiotensin aldosterone system plays an important role in regulating blood pressure in the body. When blood pressure drops or blood flow to the kidney diseases, renin is released from the kidneys. Renin then catalyzes the conversion of angiotensinogen, that is a protein produced by the liver to angiotensin 1. Then, mechanism of action of ACE inhibitors. The ACE inhibitors lower blood pressure by reducing peripheral vascular resistance. It blocks the ACE that leaves angiotensin 1 to from the potent vasoconstrictor angiotensin 2. ACE inhibitors decreases angiotensin 2 and increases bradykinin level. ACE inhibitors also decreases the secretion of allosterone, resulting in decreased sodium and water retention. Next, mechanism of action of ARBs. ARBs work by blocking the action of angiotensin 2, that is a hormone, and causes blood vessels to narrow and increases blood pressure. Angiotensin 2 works by binding to specific receptors in blood vessels and other tissues, causing them to constrict. ARBs block these receptors, preventing angiotensin 2 from exerting its vasoconstrictor effects and causing blood vessels to relax and widen. Then, by blocking the action of angiotensin 2, ARBs cause a decrease in blood pressure and an improvement in blood flow to the heart and other organs. This makes them useful for treating hypertension and other cardiovascular conditions. ARBs also have some protective effects on the kidneys similar to ACE inhibitors. They can reduce the pressure within the kidneys' blood vessels and decrease the amount of protein that is excreted in the urine, which can help to slow the progression of kidney diseases in patients with diabetes and other conditions. Now, history of development of ACE inhibitors. The development of ACE inhibitors began in 1950s when scientists first discovered the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, a hormone system that regulates blood pressure and fluid balance in the body. In the 1960s, researchers at Sequip Pharmaceutical Company discovered captopril, the first ACE inhibitor which was approved by the FDA for clinical use in 1981. Then, clinical uses of ACE inhibitors. The clinical use of ACE inhibitors quickly expanded due to their ability to effectively lower blood pressure and improve outcomes in patients with hypertension. In addition, studies show that ACE inhibitors could also improve outcomes in patients with heart failure, reducing the risk of hospitalization and death. And AC inhibitors were also found to have a protective effect on the kidneys, reducing the risk of kidney failure in patients with diabetes and kidney diseases. 
they were shown to be effective in slowing the progression of diabetic nephropathy a condition in which kidneys disease history of development of arbs the first arb rosartan was developed by marek and co and approved for clinical use in the united states in 1995 rosartan was the first drug in a new class of agents that selectively block the angiotensin 2 type 1 Receptors which mediates most of the physiological actions of angiotensin II, including vasoconstrictions and aldosterone secretions, and clinical uses of ARBs. ARBs are the medications that are commonly used in clinical practice to treat hypertension, heart failure, and kidney diseases. Chemical structure of ACE inhibitors. AC inhibitors are a class of medications that have a similar chemical structure. They are all peptides or peptide derivatives and contains a carboxyl group and an amino group. The basic chemical structure of AC inhibitors consists of a proline or a derivative of proline such as captopril or phenylalanine linked to a carboxyl terminal acidic group. This acidic group is responsible for binding to the active site of the AC enzymes thus blocking its activity. Chemical structure of ARBs. The basic chemical structure of ARBs consists of a biphenyl tetrazole group and an acidic or carboxylic acid group attached to an aromatic moiety. The tetrazole group is responsible for binding to the angiotensin 2 type 1 receptors. while the aromatic moiety is responsible for determining the selectivity and potency of the drug the specific chemical structure of each arb varies slightly giving rise to difference in their pharmacological properties and clinical effects for example lozartan contains a tetrazole group and an imidazole ring while lozartan contains a tetrazole group and a biphenyl group then there is a comparison between arbs and ac inhibitors solubility ac inhibitors are more water soluble while arbs are less soluble in water and ac inhibitors have varying degree of lipophilicity while arbs are more lipophilic than ac inhibitors and half life of ac inhibitors ranges from few hours to several hours while arbs ranges from 6 to 24 hours bioavailability of ac inhibitors ranges from 25 to 60% and arbs bioavailability ranges from 30 to 50% structure activity relationship structure activity relationship may be is a principle in medicinal chemistry that explores the relationship between the chemical structure of a compound and its biological activity it involves studying how specific changes or modifications in the structure of a molecule can affect its potency selectivity or other properties related to its biological activity then structure activity relationship of ace inhibitors the presence of a carboxylic acid or a carboxylate group which is essential for binding to the active site of the ac enzymes and inhibiting its activity the presence of a bulky or hydrophobic side chain which enhances the binding of ac inhibitors to the enzyme and increases its potency the presence of a heterocyclic ring such as pyridine or pyrimidine ring which enhances the selectivity of the ac inhibitor for the ace enzyme the presence of a protein or a protein derivative which is important for maintaining the proper conformation of the ac inhibitors and enhances its binding to the ac enzymes then structure activity relationship of arbs the presence of a tetrazole group which is essential for binding to the ad1 receptor and blocking the action of angiotensin 2 the presence of an aromatic moiety which determines the selectivity and potency of the arbs the presence of a biphenyl group which enhances the binding of the arb to the ad1 receptor and increases its potency the presence of a carboxylic acid or an acidic group which enhances the solubility and absorption of the arb the synthetic roots of ac inhibitors peptide synthesis 
Early ACE inhibitors were peptides that were synthesized through solid phase peptide synthesis. This method involves stepwise assembly of amino acids on a solid spot, followed by cleavage and purification of the peptide. Then, prodrug synthesis. Many AC inhibitors are prodrugs that are synthesized by sterification or amidation of the carboxylic acid group of the active drug. This allows for increased oral bioavailability and improved pharmacokinetic properties. Classical organic chemistry methods ACE inhibitors can also be synthesized by using classical organic chemistry methods such as coupling reactions, neutrophilic substitution, and condensations. These methods are often used to introduce bulky or hydrophobic cytines or heterocyclic rings. Biocatalysis Biocatalytic methods such as enzymatic hydrolysis or transmination can also be used to synthesize AC inhibitors. These methods are often used to produce chiral intermediates or to perform radioselective reactions. Then flow chemistry. Flow chemistry also plays an important role in the formation of AC inhibitors. Flow chemistry involves the continuous flow of the reagents and reaction mixtures through a series of reactors which allows for precise control of reaction conditions and rapid optimization of reaction parameters. This method has been used to synthesize AC inhibitors with high yields and purity. Then, synthetic rules of ARBs. Classical organic chemistry methods. ARBs are typically synthesized using classical organic chemistry methods such as coupling reactions, nucleophilic substitution, and condensations. These methods are often used to introduce the tetrazole group and the aromatic moiety. Biocatalysis Biocatalytic methods such as transmination or enzymatic hydrolysis can also be used to synthesize ARBs. These methods can be used to produce chiral intermediates or to perform radioselective reactions. Then flow chemistry. Flow chemistry can also be used to synthesize ARBs. This method allows for precise control of reaction conditions and rapid optimization of reaction parameters. And now how we pro produce AC inhibitors and ARBs on large scale. Following parameters should be adapted to manufacture these drugs on large scale. First, raw material selection. The selection of raw material is critical for achieving high yields and purity. High yield starting materials with consistent quality and purity are essential for achieving consistent product quality. Then quality control. Quality control measures are essential for ensuring product quality and consistency. These measures include in-process testing, product testing, and stability testing. And reaction conditions. Reaction conditions such as temperature, pressure, pH, and reaction time must be optimized to Maximize yield and purity. Factors such as solubility, reactivity, and stability of the reactants and products must be considered. Separation and purification. Effective separation and purification strategies are critical for achieving high purity. Common separation techniques include chromatography, crystallization, and distillation. Scalability. The manufacturing process must be scalable to produce large quantities of the drug products. This requires the use of equipment and processes that can be easily scaled up without compromising product quality. Then, quality control. Quality control measures are essential for ensuring product quality and consistency. These measures include in process testing and product testing and stability testing. Then, environmental sustainability. The manufacturing process must also be environmentally sustainable. Strategies such as waste minimization, recycling, and the use of renewable energy resources must help to reduce the environmental impact of the manufacturing process. And techniques to ensure the safety. High performance liquid chromatography. HPLC stands for high performance liquid chromatography. It is a commonly used analytical technique for the separation, identification, and quantification of compounds in drug products. High performance liquid chromatography is used to assess the purity, identity, and concentration of the active pharmaceutical ingredients in AC inhibitors and ARBs. Next one is liquid chromatography mass spectrometry.
It's a powerful technique that combines the separation capabilities of liquid chromatography with the detection and identification capabilities of mass spectrometry. Liquid chromatography mass spectrometry is used to identify and quantify impurities in drug products and to assess the quality of the API. Then nuclear magnetic resonance. Nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy is a powerful tool for determining the structure and purity of molecules. Nuclear magnetic resonance is used to confirm the identity of the API and to identify the quantity of impurities in drug products. Infrared spectroscopy. Infrared spectroscopy is used to identify and quantify functional groups in molecules. Infrared spectroscopy is used to confirm the identity or the API and to identify and quantify impurities in drug products. Then, clinical applications of AC inhibitors. Hypertension. AC inhibitors are commonly prescribed as first-line agents for the treatment of hypertension, means high blood pressure. They effectively lower blood pressure by relaxing blood vessels, reducing the workload on the heart, and improving overall cardiovascular functions. Next one is heart failure. PC inhibitors are a cornerstone of therapy of for heart failure which reduce ejection fraction. They dilate blood vessels, improve cardiac output, reduce fluid retention, and slow the progression of heart failure. Examples of AC inhibitors used in heart failure include enalapril, lisinopril, and ramipril. Next, diabetic nephropathy. AC inhibitors have renoprotective effects and are used in patients with diabetic nephropathy. Kidney disease associated with diabetes. They produce, they reduce proteinuria, slow the decline of renal function and delay the progression to end-stage renal disease. Post-myocardial infraction. SE inhibitors are recommended for patients who have had a, who had a myocardial infraction to improve survival prevent heart failure and reduce the risk of future cardiovascular events. Next, clinical applications of ARBs. First one is hypertension. ARBs are commonly prescribed as an alternative to AC inhibitors for the management of hypertension. They reduce blood pressure by blocking the effects of angiotensin to resulting in vasodilation and decrease peripheral resistance. Examples of ARBs used in hypertension include Lozartan, Valzartan, and Herbestran. Then heart failure. ARBs are used in patients who are intolerant to AC inhibitors or as an additional therapy in combination with other heart failure medications. They have similar effects to AC inhibitors including improving symptoms, reducing hospitalization, and improving survival in heart failure patients. Then, diabetic nephropathy. Like AC inhibitors, ARBs are also used in patients with diabetic nephropathy to reduce proteinuria and delay the progression of renal diseases. Protection against cardiovascular events. ARBs may be prescribed in patients at high risk of cardiovascular events such as those with a history of stroke or coronary artery disease to reduce the risk of future events. Then, pharmacokinetics of AC inhibitors. First one is absorption. AC inhibitors are orally administered medications that are well absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract. Food intake can affect the rate and extent of absorption for some AC inhibitors such as captopril but not for others like enalapril or lisinopril. Second one is distribution. AC inhibitors have a moderate volume of distribution, indicating that they distribute relatively well throughout the body tissues. They are highly bound to plasma proteins, primarily albumin, which can influence their distribution. Third one is metabolism. Most AC inhibitors undergo extensive metabolism in the liver, primarily via hepatic cytochrome P450 enzymes. However, the specific enzymes involved and the extent of metabolism vary among different AC inhibitors. For example, enalapril is converted to its active form. Enalaprilate, primarily throughout hydrolysis by steresis in the liver and other tissues. 
On the other hand, this inoperil is not metabolized significantly and is primarily eliminated on genes via the kidneys. And elimination. AC inhibitors and their metabolites are primarily excreted via the renal route. Renal clearance plays a crucial role in the elimination of AC inhibitors and dose adjustment may be necessary in patients with impaired renal function. The elimination half-life of AC inhibitors varies among different drugs, ranges from a few hours to several hours. Then, pharmacokinetics of ARBs. First one is absorption. ARBs are also orally administered medications with good bioavailability. Food intake dose does not significantly affect the absorption of ARBs. Next, distribution. ARBs have a relatively large volume of distribution indicating widespread distribution in the body tissues. They are highly bound to plasma proteins, primarily albumin, which affect their distribution and potential interaction with other drugs. Then metabolism. Unlike AC inhibitors, ARBs undergo minimal hepatic metabolism. Most ARBs are metabolized to a limited extent, primarily via cytochrome P450 enzymes. However, the metabolized dendrites have minimal pharmacological activity. Then elimination. ARBs and their metabolites are primarily eliminated via the renal and facial routes. Renal clearance is an important elimination pathway for ARBs and dose adjustment may be in required in patients with renal impairment. The elimination half-life of ARBs varies among different drugs but is generally longer than that of AC inhibitors, ranging from several hours to a day. Benefits of AC inhibitors Effective in hypertension, AC inhibitors are highly effective in lowering blood pressure, making them a first-line treatment for hypertension. Then cardiovascular protection, AC inhibitors have been shown to provide cardiovascular protection by reducing the risk of heart failure, myocardial infraction, and stroke. Renal protection. They are beneficial in patients with diabetic nephropathy or chronic kidney disease as they have to slow the progression of renal damage. Well established safety profile. AC inhibitors have been used for many years and have a well established safety profile. Drawbacks and side effects of AC inhibitors. Dry cough. AC inhibitors can cause a persistent dry cough in some patients, which can be bothersome. Angioedema. Although rare, AC inhibitors have been associated with angioedema, a potentially serious allergic reaction characterized by swelling of the face, lips, tongue, and throat. And hyperkalemia. AC inhibitors can increase potassium levels, especially in patients with pre existing kidney diseases or those taking other medications that increase potassium levels. So, use AC inhibitors with the doctor's prescription. First dose, hypotension. Some patients may experience a sudden drop in blood pressure after the first dose of an AC inhibitor, particularly in volume depleted individuals or those taking diuretics. Then, benefits of ARBs. ARB is effective in hypertension. ARBs are similarly effective in lowering blood pressure and are often used as an alternative to AC inhibitors. Cardiovascular protection. ARBs provide cardiovascular protection and are beneficial in conditions like heart failure, myocardial infraction, and stroke prevention. Well tolerated. ARBs are generally well tolerated and patients may have a lower risk of experiencing the dry cough associated with AC inhibitors. Renal protection. ARBs like AC inhibitors can slow the progression of renal damage in patients with diabetic nephropathy, chronic kidney disease. And drawbacks and side effects of ARBs. Hyperkalemia. Like AC inhibitors, ARBs can increase potassium levels, particularly in patients with impaired kidney function. Hypotension. ARBs can cause a drop in blood pressure, especially in patients who are volume depleted or taking other anti-hypertensive medications than angioedema. Although rare, but angioedema has been reported with ARBs similar to AC inhibitors. 
and emerging applications of AC inhibitors and ARDs. This can be used for cancer, neurological disorders, and viral infections. Cancer. Anti-tumor effects. Preclinical studies have shown that AC inhibitors and ARBs may have direct anti-tumor effects by inhibiting angiotensin. Angiogenesis, reducing tumor growth and preventing metastasis. Then, potentiation of cancer therapies. Some evidence suggests that AC inhibitors and ARPs may enhance the effectiveness of certain cancer therapies, such as chemotherapy and immunotherapy, by improving drug delivery and moderating the immune response. Neurological disorders, Alzheimer's diseases. AC inhibitors and ARBs have shown promise in preclinical studies for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. They may help to reduce neuroinflammation, protect against amyloid beta disposition, and improve cognitive function. Parkinson's disease. Limited evidence suggested that AC inhibitors and ARBs may have neuroprotective effects in Parkinson's diseases by reducing oxidative stress, inflammation, and neuronal death. Viral infection Some studies suggest that AC inhibitors and ARBs may have antiviral properties against other viral infections, such as immunodeficiency virus HIV and hepatitis C virus HCV. However, further research is needed to establish their efficacy and mechanism of action. Regulatory and ethical uses regarding to AC inhibitors and ARPs. First, off-label prescribing. Off-label prescribing refers to the use of medications for conditions or patients' population not specifically approved by regulatory authorities. While AC inhibitors and ARPs have well-established indications, there may be situations where healthcare providers prescribe them for off-label use. While off-label prescribing is legal and sometimes necessary based on clinical judgment, it can raise concerns about the lack of robust evidence for safety and efficacy in those specific indications. Then, drug pricing. The cost of medications including AC inhibitors and ARPs can pose challenges for patients and healthcare systems. The pricing of these drugs is influenced by various factors including research and development costs, manufacturing expenses, patent protection, and market competition. High drug prices can limit patient access and affordability, particularly for those without adequate insurance coverage. These issues may lead to ethical concerns regarding equitable access to essential medications. Then, patient access to healthcare. Access to healthcare, including appropriate diagnosis, prescription, and ongoing management of conditions, is a significant ethical concern. Availability and accessibility of AC inhibitors and ARBs can vary across different healthcare systems, regions, and socioeconomic backgrounds. Limited access to these medications can lead to disparities in treatment and contribute to inequities in, in healthcare outcomes. So there are some references from where I will prepare my presentation. So thank you.